Hello, everybody. We're so glad to be with you today on Believing for Beyond. I'm Steve. I'm Denise. And uh, we're going to share some uh, powerful things with you. We believe that we hope will be a blessing to your life, to your marriage. And uh, the, the most important thing that we have to share is that God is for you. He loves you. He, he loves marriage. He, he's for love. He's for you. That's right. And if God be for you, who can be against you? So there's not anything that we can't work through and come out of better before we start, uh, or better after we finish than before we start. So uh, we're talking about a very important subject, uh, one of the most important subjects in marriage, which is trust in marriage and the importance of trust in marriage there. When we trust God and we trust each other, then we have a firm foundation for a strong marriage. Uh, so trust is, certainly is a thing that's under attack in marriage. Uh, the, first of all, the, the uh, obvious thing is the devil hates marriage. Yes, he the does. The devil hates uh, people. He hates what God loves. And it's God's idea to bring people together in marriage, uh, to have a life that... Uh, speaks of the love of Christ in the church and as a witness to the world that love is real, that Christ is real, and uh, that sacrifice is real. Yes. So uh, love is a way to sacrifice. And when we break trust or we don't count trust as important as it should be in, in marriage, then we're, we're uh, walking in a, an unself or a selfish state that uh, has no place in in the relationship of God in the church and uh, the relationship of husband and wife. So uh, we started out last week showing you a little graphic uh, with the letters for the word trust, T-R-U-S-T. And uh, in that graphic, uh, we, we had that T stands for right. There you go. And may not be able to see it clearly, the smaller letters, but T stands for truth. R stands for re reliability. And the last T stands for transparency. And when truth, reliability, and transparency surround us, then we have an established trust. So uh, we, we believe that the essence of trust is to, to be truthful, uh, to be reliable, to be someone who can be counted on, and someone who's transparent and open and not hiding in the shadows and not hiding from each other. And, when those things are in place, then there is an opportunity for trust to be established in a godly way. That's right. So uh, we're going to get into some things that we think are important. Uh, the three areas we want to include in this series about the importance of trust in marriage is to uh, maintain and cultivate trust. And we're going to share some steps that will be helpful in doing that. And also to talk about what we, what we want to do and how we want to react when there is a, a loss of trust. And also talk about some ways of rebuilding and restoring trust. So uh, some very powerful things and very important things in, the, in uh, healthy marriages and marriages that want to rebound from any type of infidelity. So uh, there can be no peace or safety in the home uh, if there is not trust. And uh, one verse of scripture that I'd like to start out with, uh, there's a trust from a godly woman displayed in Proverbs 31. In verse 30, I'm sorry, verse 11 of Proverbs 31 says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Or it could be uh, of the wife, the heart of his wife does trace, sa safely trust in him. Uh, the NIV version of Proverbs 31, 11 says her husband can trust her and she will greatly be enriched uh, by his life uh, and he'll be greatly enriched by her life. Uh, so that means a, a trustworthy spouse makes a husband or wife rich. That's right. And uh, there's, there's many ways to be rich other than just silver and gold or, or money or finances. Uh, when there's sincere trust on both sides from a husband and wife, then uh, there's a, a home that's rich in the things that are really important to God. One of the things that I stated on our last video where we were talking about trust is that trust, broken trust can come on different levels. It's not always infidelity. 
Sometimes it's trusting that you will carry through with what you said you would do, trusting that you will take care of me, trusting that you will be the example that you're supposed to be. So trust can be broken on all sorts of levels. And when trust is broken, it is very difficult to win back. And that's exactly right. So uh, it's, it's better to maintain trust than to have to be, to, uh, be working on rebuilding trust. Uh, we're going to talk about all those things, but the, the best way to have trust in a relationship is to never betray that trust. And uh, for a, a lot of situations that we go through, sometimes that's very unrealistic because we all let each other down. Uh, we all fail each other. Many times we, we fail to live up to the vows that we take when we marry. So uh, a real, uh, an atmosphere of trust also has to be an atmosphere of mercy and forgiveness and grace and love and encouragement along the way that we can be the best that we need to be for God and for each other. So uh, we're going to start out by talking about some steps that are important to maintain and cultivate trust. And uh, the first step, which in some of these may seem simple, and they're, they're very simple to say, but they're not always easy to carry out. Uh, we can say a whole lot of things, but to follow through on what we say is, is an, uh, an attitude of trust as well. Uh, it, it makes me think of, of one of the rebukes that Jesus had for the Pharisees. He said, uh, whatever they tell you to do, do it. So, and he said, but they don't do what they say. So do what they say, but don't do as they do because they don't do what they say they're going to do. And so part of the rebuke that the Lord had for the Pharisees, and I think he, he would have for us too in such a, a loving and kind way, but a, a challenging way is to say, when whatever you say, follow through with what you're going to do right. and keep your word and, and be men and women of integrity uh, in every area of life, but especially in the area of the home. Because where there's an atmosphere of trust, there is an atmosphere of of love and security, and that's what it needs to be. There needs to be a safe place. Uh, by the grace of God, we want our, our homes and our hearts and our words and our actions to be a place of, of trust, a safe place. So the first thing we want to talk about in cultivating and maintaining a, an atmosphere of trust is to watch and pray. Uh, everything worth doing should be bathed in prayer, uh, everything worth doing, we need God's help to do it, because if we did it on our own, we're we're all we're bound to fail. That's right. Because uh, anything worth doing, we need God's help to do it in such a way that we don't take any credit for it. Uh, even the Apostle Paul, as great as he was and as great as he is to us, because he wrote most of the New Testament, and we gain so much wealth from his words. He said, "For me to live is Christ, and to die is is gain." And he wasn't just talking about dying from uh, this life and going to heaven, but as we die in this life to our own ways, then we're gaining. Yes. And uh, he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And, and so that's the balance. He, he didn't just say, I can do all things, but he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So in order to maintain and cultivate trust in our lives, we have to watch and pray. Jesus said in Matthew 26, 41, he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We can't depend on our flesh to do what's right. No. And yeah. nobody's flesh gets better and better with time. Uh, the Bible says the flesh is weak. It's always been weak. It's always going to be weak. And the more we depend on the flesh, the weaker we are. That's and right. the more susceptible we are to betray one another uh, in little ways and maybe even big ways. Uh, so we, we can't rely on our flesh or our own ability to do anything without God's help. So we have to watch, which literally means stay awake. Uh, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, uh, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is out to devour us. So we have to be aware of his tactics. His tactics is to uh, cause us to get to the place where we, we have wars and fightings among ourselves and we, we see each other as the enemy 
and we learn to be suspicious of each other and distrust each other. Uh, but if we stay awake and realize that we have an adversary, but it's not each other, and our adversary is the devil who wants to uh, come between us and put a wedge between us and cause mistrust and uh, cause suspicion, then we can know who our enemy is and we can begin to resist him. So Jesus said that. If Jesus said that, we need to take heed to it and pay attention sure. to it, to watch, stay awake and pray. And then Colossians 4, 2 says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So as we're praying for God to help us to be what we need to be for him and for each other, Paul adds in Colossians 4 that we're, we're still to watch, but also as we watch, we're to be thankful for each other. We can't be suspicious of each other if we're always thankful for each other. And uh, we, we become closer and closer together when we thank God for the person that God has given us to spend our lives with. And we, if we honor each other in that way, then there's less of a chance that we betray each other or let each other down because we have a desire to please God and to be what we're supposed to be for that person that God's given us to share our lives with. That's right. So watch and pray, stay awake. And it's kind of ironic, but the best way to rest at night is to stay awake in prayer and faith and to be aware that the enemy is against us. But when we stand against the enemy in prayer and we keep our eyes open and our hearts open to the attacks of the enemy, then we can be at peace when we lay down at night and, and we can, and our spouses can be at peace with it as well. So that's number one, watch and pray. Uh, number two would be to be proactive in love. Uh, love each other the way you want to be loved. Uh, be the first to reach out in love. Uh, it, it, we don't need to have the attitude in marriage that I'll love you if you love me. But if both of us, husbands and wives, have the attitude that I'm going to love you with all of my heart and I'm going to try to outlove you with my actions, uh, with my words, with uh, everything that I am, and we try to do that, then you're setting yourself up for happiness and security and peace and safety. So to be pro proactive means I'm not going to wait for you to love me. I'm going to love you first. And when both husbands and wives are doing that, then you can't help but be blessed. And, and your love and your confidence in each other and your confidence in the Lord just grows and becomes stronger and stronger. And not only love each other the way you want to be loved, trust each other the way you want to be trusted. When, when both people are trying to work on... Uh, cementing the relationship in such a way that I'm going to trust you with all of my heart and I'm going to be someone that you can trust with all of your heart, then the enemy doesn't have any way to come in and put a wedge between you and begin to create suspicion or distrust because we're committed to not only trusting one another, but being someone that can also be trusted. So uh, when we're not willing to trust like that, then there's an atmosphere of fear and suspicion, uh, and we can get to the point where we stop seeing each other through the eyes of God, and we take our eyes off the Lord. That's when we give in to the flesh. That's when we put ourselves in a position where the devil can manipulate us into uh, disloyalty or distrust or fear of one another. If we keep our eyes on the Lord and we love and value each other the way God loves That's and values right. us, and we see each other through his eyes, then again, we're setting ourselves up for a solid, strong uh, home where there's safety, where there's trust, where there's security, and where there's peace and where there's love. So, when there's fear and suspicion at work, the enemy takes advantage, and not only will he put thoughts in your mind, he can manipulate the situation to make it appear the way that it's really not because in your mind you're already seeing, you're already hearing things, you're already, your mind is focused on the negative that the enemy has put before you and make things look much bigger than what they are a lot of times. And in reality, there may be some real issues there, but a lot of time, but if we're focused on fear of, of, you know, our words are, I'll never be able to trust, or you did this, and I'm never going to trust you. I'm never going to let you live it down. And you're going to keep focusing on that. 
then of course you're going to be controlled by fear and things are going to always look bigger than what they are. All right. That's so true. Perfect love cast out fear. And our love certainly isn't perfect, but his love is. That's so right. when the Bible talks about perfect love, it's talking about that security of knowing that we're loved of him and knowing he's the one that brought us together. So he believes in our love for him and for each other. So when that's the foundation of our life, that God loved us first and he gives us that ability to trust he, what he sees in us for each other, then we don't have to be afraid of each other. And, and that love begins to cast out that fear, uh, which leads us to number three, which is Jude chapter one, verse 21, uh, which says, keep yourself in the love of God. In other words, sometimes it has to be a conscious decision that we make to keep ourselves in love That's right. Be, because again, because we are flesh and a lot of times uh, we are easily offended. We're easily distracted. It's easy to get ourselves out of love rather than to keep in love or stay in love. Uh, so I, I believe that God's will for us is to begin and end in love and let love be everything in between. Always focus on love uh, in we, we can always go back to the fact that God loved us first, and that's how we love him in return. And it, he loved us enough to give us someone to love, so it's always right to love. That doesn't mean that uh, we're oblivious to things that we need to deal with, but we can deal with everything that we deal with, with an attitude of love, with an attitude of, of respect and honor, because when love and respect begins to break down, then hearts can begin to be hard and it's hard to keep yourself in the love of God when your heart is hard. Uh, and Jesus said that even in Moses' time, Moses gave the people uh, a writing of divorcement because of the hardness of their hearts, but it wasn't always that way. So uh, Jesus was saying that one of the root causes of problems in marriage is a hardness of heart. Uh, that you can start being uh, suspicious of each other, start being callous toward each other, start taking each other for granted, and uh, start uh, looking at each other with suspicion and uh, putting each other down and not valuing each other the, the way the Word of God says that we should value each other. All of these uh, areas can cultivate, cultivate distrust. That's right. So if they cultivate distrust, we know how to build trust by always seeing each other through the eyes of the Lord. And, and sometimes that's not easy to do when you get hurt, right. when you get wounded, but you can always pray, God, help me to see uh, my spouse the way you see her. Help me to see my spouse the way you see him. I, I want to see them through your eyes and help me have your heart for them. And then when we do that, uh, when we we run to the Lord in prayer and cry out to God in prayer rather than just running to our complaints and, and allowing the enemy to make the complaints bigger than they really are, like, like Denise said earlier. And sometimes there are issues that need to be dealt with, yes. but uh, we, if we deal with them when they're small and we don't let them just eat at us and they, we don't let them just... Uh, be buried deep in our heart, then when we finally explode, they're a lot bigger than they could have been uh, dealt with when we were uh, when we were dealing with them when when they first came about. But we don't want so we don't want to let things just uh, smolder and get bigger and bigger. We want to deal with them in love. We want to deal with them out of respect for each other and not out of suspicion and not out of guilt and and not out of fear. So we want to begin and end in love because faith works by love. If, if there's no love in operation, then there's no ability for faith to work. And uh, so we got to guard our hearts. And uh, that brings us to number four. Guard your heart. Yes. Protect your heart. Uh, because the devil's after our hearts. Yes, he is. And uh, the Bible says, with the heart, man believes. So it, we don't believe with just with the mind. We don't believe with the emotions. We don't believe with feelings. We believe with our heart. So our feelings can change. Our thoughts can change. But the, and the devil plays with our thoughts and the devil plays with our emotions, but he really wants to get to our heart because it's with our heart that we believe. 
our heart is where we have our relationship with God, where he communicates love and, and acceptance and uh, uh, he shows us how much he cares about us and, and how, how much he values us. So that's a heart connection between us and the Lord. So it, it stands to reason that the devil would like to destroy our heart connection between a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Because when we communicate from the heart, then we're getting to the depth of who we really are right. and the way we really see each other. But if we communicate with feelings and emotions, sometimes emotions can betray us. Uh, and, and we can sometimes uh, a person can do something that they can never te take back in a fit of emotion. Yes. And we can let words come out of our mouth That's that right. we really regret saying after we say them or do things that we don't really want to do that we regret after we do them. But if we ask our God to help us react from the heart and not from our emotions and not from our feelings, then we're communicating on the level that God wants us to communicate. And that will always be to value each other because he values That's us. Right. And we never want to devalue ourselves or see ourselves less than God sees us because in doing that, we not only honor, dishonor each other, we dishonor God because God's always going to see us the same. He loves us unconditionally. And, and that's what we want to strive for in our relationship with each other is that we love each other unconditionally. I may not like everything that my wife always does, and I, I know I don't, and I know she doesn't like everything that I always do. But, but that, that should not affect my love for her or her love for me because that's deeper than some of the things that we may not agree on exactly or do things exactly alike but those aren't game changers or deal breakers because we're committed to love each other beyond and in spite of sometimes the differences that we have. And a matter of fact, the differences are what makes our relationship unique. Uh, so, so we want to guard our heart to realize that out of the heart comes the issues of life. Out of yes. the heart we believe. And, and so faith is produced from the heart. And the things that are most important come out of the heart. So things that are most important in our trust and in our relationship and our diligence to see each other the way God sees us has to come from the heart. Uh, so in order for our heart to stay right, we have to stay in connection with the Lord and we have to uh, judge our hearts for out of the heart uh, man believes. And, and so that means faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We feed our hearts on the word of God so that our lives are reflecting what the Word of God not only says about us, but if it says about us, it says about our spouse, uh, because he loves us just the same. He doesn't, he doesn't love me more than he loves my wife. He doesn't love my wife more than he loves me. As a matter of fact, when I value her the way that God values her, then I'm also valuing myself. Because the Bible even said, no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it. And we're bone of, bo uh, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And we become one. So to build her up is to build myself up. For her to build me up is for her to build herself up. When we tear each other down, we're tearing our, our union, our commitment, our love, what God has brought together. We're actually going against the word of God because the Bible says what God has joined together, let no man pull apart. But when we're tearing each other down, we're actually pulling apart what God wants to be united together. So uh, to be patient with each other and loving with each other and sometimes asking God to give us uh, his heart for us and to always see each other through God's eyes is a way to uh, maintain and cultivate the trust that God wants us to have for each other. Would you like to add anything to that? Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay, we're on number five. Uh, the fifth thing that we want to be aware of uh, in cultivating and maintaining trust in a relationship is a very simple thing also, again, but a very difficult thing sometimes to do, and that's to keep your word. Keep your word. Uh, a man and woman, uh, we want to be a man and woman of the word of God, and we want to be a man and woman of our word because we trust God to keep his word and how can we trust God to keep his word if we're not willing to ask God to help us to keep our word? And so we want to keep our word to God. We want to be faithful to God in the things that he requires of us. 
and we want to be faithful to each other. We want to develop and cultivate an attitude and an atmosphere of trust. That means we have to keep our word consistently, not do it once in a while, not do it most of the time. And, and all of us have, have uh, failed to keep our words from time to time. And all of us have uh, been uh, unfaithful in ways because when we think of unfaithful, we usually think of sexual sexuality, but there's so many ways to be unfaithful, right. as Denise said. And uh, so some of those things of being unfaithful is to fail to keep our word right. or right. fail to fulfill our promises and to do what we say that we'll do. So uh, God wants us to be a man and woman of our word, and we want our word to be our bond. And uh, just a thought that I believe the Lord gave me a while back is that uh, a wedding band doesn't ensure a wedding bond. Keeping your word does ensure a wedding bond. Right. So we want to be faithful to keep our word to do what we say we're going to do. And I know we're about out, out of time for this session. And uh, we've got a couple of more points that we want to share on cultivating and developing and maintaining trust. And when we get through with that portion, we want to go into uh, some of the things uh, that are results of loss of trust, causes of loss of trust, and then ultimately restoring of that trust. And we believe by the grace of God, uh, and we're not encouraging anyone to fall into a, an atmosphere of unfaithfulness or uh, a place of infidelity, but thank God, even in those places, there's opportunities for God to work in such a way by his grace and mercy to establish a place of healing in a broken place that can even become stronger than it was before the breaking. And so we want to talk about a lot more important things, but uh, we hope that what we've shared today has been a blessing to you and encouragement to you. And we're going to continue with this very important uh, topic of the importance of, of maintaining trust and building trust and talking about trust in marriage. So we'd like to go to, to the Lord with you for a word of prayer. God, thank you for everyone that's listening today and uh, for anyone that's hurting, anyone that's struggling in any of the areas that we've mentioned. God, we ask you to, to draw them to you. Let them know, Lord, there's always hope beyond what they might be struggling with. And God, there's not anything too hard for you to help in when, when we just come to you and cry out to you and say, God, help us. Lord, we don't, we don't always know what to do, but we can turn our eyes on you and know that you're always there to help. You're always there to make the difference. God, uh, trust is something that we can always have in you and you're never going to let us down, but God, thank you for your mercy when we let you down and when we let each other down. And thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for help. God, uh, help us to get to the place where our lives, our marriages, our homes are, are safe places of trust and love and grace and favor, Lord, so that we can come to that place where others can look at our relationships and say that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way a man's supposed to love and trust a woman. That's the way a woman is supposed to love and trust a man. No matter how far away we are, Lord, God, we can always just take one step back and yes. turn to you and say, God, help us. Yes. We need your help to be what you've called us to be. And God, there's nothing worth doing without your help. So thank you for your help for everybody that may be struggling in any way, Lord. Your very present help in the time of need. We thank you and give you praise in advance for healing, for strength, and for victory for husbands and wives that need you now. We thank you and give you all the praise because you are God and always will be a God who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power of God that dwells in us. Thank you for the power of God working in those that are listening and reaching out and crying out for help. Thank you for being there to bring deliverance, healing, and victory, no matter how much the struggle is hurting. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See God you next you. time. Yes, thank you so much for listening today. We love you. See you next time.